Hey everyone, Chris Gabbett here from The Fablographer, and today we're talking about a subject that's very near and dear to me. It is about black and white photography, but specifically, it's about whether or not when you're working in Capture One, you should be working in the black and white mode, the grayscale mode, and I'm going to show you a little bit about sepia. Now, this tutorial is really targeted at all the people that are coming over to Capture One from Lightroom. Anyone that's been working with Capture One for a while obviously knows this information, but um, I figure that it could help a lot of you guys out. So, to get started here, I'm going to go to a blog post that we did a while ago. And this is a blog post that was about desaturation versus grayscale when it comes to working in black and white conversions. Ignore this number. It happened when we went from HTTP to HTTPS. And in order to do this, uh, what I did was I talked to Sherrod Mangalik, who is the senior product manager of digital imaging at Adobe, or at least he was at the time. And it was in specifically uh, a question to Lightroom. And he said, when you desaturate the image, you're toning down the color. The color information is still there, though. Clicking on the black and white button or using the black and white portion of the HSL panel converts the image to grayscale. Converting to grayscale allows you to tweak the black and white mix, which is not something you can do when you desaturate the image. And that's more or less what happens in Capture One. So in order to show that to you, I'm going to take you through a couple of images just to let you guys know these images are from the a7r3 which you can see right here and they were shot with the 55 millimeter f1.8 which is i believe it's sony's second sharpest lens and in capture one there are different ways that you can go about working in black and white so let me show you the desaturation example first so i'm going to go to uh the editor I'm going to say I'm going to desaturate all of this. Okay, so what I may want to do usually, and the way that I usually edit in Capture One, is I work with the color editor. And let's say I want to work with this color channel. And um, you don't really see anything changing here at all. As much as I try to mess with it. And I'm going to do this again with this color channel. And now I see nothing. So if I really wanted to work with it in any sort of way, what I have to do is I have to work with more or less what I like to call basic adjustments. Um, nerf the brightness a bit, kill the highlights, maybe boost the shadows, raise the clarity, and then I go ahead and I add some sharpening. And that's it. And that's one way to do it, but it doesn't give you as much control as converting to black and white does. Let me show you what happens when you convert to black and white. So I'm going to go... And I'm going to choose reset. And now in the color panel, you have this option over here that enables you to switch to black and white. And now let me let me get out of black and white for a second. So to show you guys just how effective this is, I'm also going to change my white balance. So right now I'm at 3267. Uh, what I'm going to do, maybe I could do that. Okay, yeah. Um, that gives me the most versatility for this editor. So keep in mind, um, this is kind of like an orange. That's an orange red. That's red for sure. Um, he is comprised in orange, purple, blue. So is she in some ways. Um, let's see what will happen if I mess with the tins. Okay, cool. So now we have a fairly neutralized image. And you can also do that from like going and picking something specifically. So I'm going to choose the grayish colors in his hair, and we'll work with that. So now when I come to enable black and white, if I work to tweak the reds, notice how I'm tweaking only the areas that were on his face over there. And now I'm brightening them. And now that doesn't really give me a mood that I like. But if I do this, and then I say I'm going to mess with the blues, the blues are touching his hair a bit, but when I mess with the blue, well, the cyans are, but if I actually mess with the blues, then now you start to see more details from his hair and his shirt start to come out. Same with the magentas. Oh, wow, look at that. Greens, there are some greens in the scene too. And now you see what happens there. Now, why did I choose to change my white balance beforehand? That's a great question. So, um, 
Let me show you this. A couple of people have sat there and been like, hey, you don't necessarily have to a white balance of 5,500 or 3,200. Um, but actually, it can make quite a difference. So the reason why I usually white balance of 5,500 and 3,200 is because they are film standards and they more or less give you the versatility and a great starting point to go from where you want and where you think you may actually want to be. So I'm going to not white balance off of that. And now I'm going to say enable black and white. But before I do that, I want you to look at this image. There's very little blue here now. There's almost no blue there. There's no sorts of greens. So now if I go through and I say I want to mess with the blue, you're barely getting any blue on his shirt. And if I want to mess with the magenta, you're barely getting anything on his shirt. And if I want to mess with the green, nothing. And I, but if I want to mess with the reds, then look at that. The entire image more or less changes. And I can do that, and now it's a lot moodier. But if I switched to 3200, then look what happens. It changes again. The blues actually start to get affected a bit more. And there's quite a bit that can be done. So now, what about sepia? So a lot of people have this question. And essentially what sepia is, is basically like a black and white photo with some very warm tones to it. And I can do this. And I have a sepia toned image. And that's it. In order to do that, I worked with the split tones. And you can do this in Lightroom, or you can do this in Capture One. But I worked to ensure that the highlights and the shadows were both warm. And then I saturated them both accordingly. And there you have your sepia image. Now, let's try this on another photo of some sort. So that is... Those are my red selections. I'm going to go to my green selections. Let's try it with... No. These are images from Sony and from a Leica CL. Let's try it on this landscape. Um, or this lake scape, rather. Yeah, it, it was a lake. It's a lake in uh, Prospect Park uh, here in Brooklyn. So, 5500 at night. Again, everything's going to be very warm. But at night, 3200 will sort of neutralize everything. Let me show you the daylight-based photo, though. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to say, let me work with the 60. Um, yeah, I'll do this. So right now, I have this, and I am at 50. I'm going to go to 5600. Uh, Kodak Portra is known to be like 6400 or something like 5600 rather so now mm, let's warm this up a bit more too okay cool there you go so now you have a warmer image and now if i enable black and white the yellow is affected by that affects that area the red affects that area green there cyan there and blue there. Now if I go to uh, 5500 or 5600 then look so it becomes a lot cooler of an image and now the red is being affected by different areas. The blue though will affect the entire image. So black and white editing depends a lot on the color channels but desaturated editing depends a lot on the basic adjustments that you can make to an image. And then uh, sepia depends on your split tones. So I can turn this into a sepia right now, like that. And there you go. You've got an old-timey feel to an image, even though it clearly isn't old-timey, because look at that uh, USPS office box Jeep thing. Yeah. Anyway, though, so this is how you go about working with black and white images in Capture One. I genuinely hope this is helpful, and we're working on a lot more tutorials like this. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys.